Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today we are joined back, maybe for the final time for a little <laughs> bit, uh, by Mr. Chris Ruscio to talk about the studio drums of Lars Ulrich Part 2. Chris, welcome back. Hey, Bart. Uh, thanks for having me back. Uh, good to be here again. <laughs> Absolutely, man. This this has been a, a long journey of uh, covering Lars gear with you over over I guess two years now. At this point, yeah. we're in yeah a lot of the second year. A lot a lot of research. Um, you know, things happen. You know, life gets in the way, but uh, we're going to get it done. We are going to get it done. So <laughs> yes, we won't go into it. But life has definitely gotten in the way for me, and I have had to bail on Chris and change dates. And he has been the absolute most understanding, cool guy uh, because. Babies and a toddler and a five-year-old make things absolute chaos. So you've been with me, man. We've recorded it. We've been recording at midnight. We've been recording in the mornings. We've been just getting it done. Yeah, it's uh, it's so. all it's all good. It's it, it's all good. Don't worry about it. So I, I enjoy yeah. doing stuff like this. So appreciate it, brother. No, so no um, real quick before we jump in, a couple things. Uh, first off, I want to thank everyone who bought one of our. So Chris last episode mentioned live laugh <laughs> Lars and we laughed and <laughs> lived and Lars and then I was like dude we should make a bumper sticker and then we did so I put it in the last episode and uh and I have them now and they're in yeah, print. that's cool you that's can cool. order them they're shipping people have been ordering them a lot of people have ordered two at a time which Chris is saying double kick yeah. set up that's what I think <laughs> <laughs> I but but so many ordered, yeah. like I think we've sold about 20 or 30 of them so many people ordered two. I was like, oh my God, did I set it to some setting that had to be mm. two? And no, people are just ordering them. So, well, yeah, if you, um, if you ordered two, hop in the comments and uh, tell us why. <laughs> yes. And, and so I will say these are very high quality, uh, 11 and a half by three inch, I believe that's the dimensions, Live Laugh <laughs> Lars bumper stickers. Like that this is, is a real deal. That is great. Vinyl bumper <laughs> sticker. Chris's are in the mail. I shipped his out. I've shipped out a bunch of them. I mean, it's me at my dining room table mailing out stickers at 11 o'clock at night. So um, they, I have received word. I checked with my friend Mike Malone, who has an awesome YouTube channel um, and does off the beaten path videos with at a bunch of drum shops. They're awesome. He got his, um, our David R ordered one who has an amazing YouTube channel. Uh, he ordered two. Oh, yeah, I know. So anyway, I know pe him. People are getting them. Um, so I hope if you have any issues, let me know. But uh, I'll put a link in the description of this video. You can go on my website and you can order them without being very confusing. If there's there's also a shop on my website where you can go where I use a service that prints things on demand. So you can order this design on a T-shirt, <laughs> on a pillow, on a <laughs> mug, on all this stuff. They print it. T Public. They print all that. There's a different sticker that's like two bucks. It's a really small one. If you order there, you'll get a T-shirt. It'll be awesome. But um, that is coming directly from a major mm. company that prints stuff on demand. Um, like I ordered a shirt. We have to pay. I have to pay for them. I mean, they just like, you, you know, whatever. But we get like a buck or two from that. If you order these, you go uh, to directly the big bumper mm. sticker. You directly support Chris and I because we're splitting the money. And for me, it'll go to podcast stuff for him. I'm sure it'll go to building another <laughs> replica drum set or maybe, something. Maybe. I need eight grand for the next one. We'll discuss that yes, later. <laughs> we'll discuss that. Okay, so get your stickers, get your Live, Laugh, Lars stickers, and support. Yeah, get, you, get yourself a pillow, man. you got to get a no bigger conversation starter than those throw pillows in, okay, your, in pillow, your wife's living room. <laughs> yes, yes. That so is the cool. pillow you can get on the shop on my website. Again, this third-party company prints that. My mom... <laughs> for four years now has had a drum history pillow in their living room and the thing is awesome it that is great, great. that is great drum, drum history <laughs> logo uh so anyway to get the, the big bumper sticker directly from us 100 of these i will very likely not print another run i might if these sell out or mm -hmm. something but Right now, I got to burn through these Live, Laugh, Lars bumper <laughs> stickers. So order one. <laughs> Those, it's a limited they are They are cool, though. They are cool. They, that, that is they funny. They are cool. <laughs> yes. And uh, before we jump in, last thing, I got to say, my friend Chris sent me something in support of <laughs> drum history and just kind of to just because he's been on the show a lot. And it was super cool. I now have my very own Lars monkey little stuffed animal to hang on the front of my bass drum or actually once my attic is finally finished as construction is halted i'm going to put it on a shelf right behind me but uh yeah so chris sent me the the exact, <laughs> the exact. not Lars's, but 
but the exact model yeah. brand. T- tell us about this monkey kind well, of briefly before bef- before we, we got on. on here. We were talking. I mean, there's a lot of those out there in the world. There's just not many people who know the significance of that. So, and <laughs> so I figured you you got to have one. You are the godfather of all uh, drum history things. So so oh, you nice. you need to have that. So yes, um, it's super cool. <laughs> And they don't make these anymore. Right? No, they don't make these. So I guess we'll, why not? Well, let's get in depth a little bit on that monkey. So it yep. hung on the right side of the kick drum pretty much for the Damage Inc., Damage Justice, and the early European uh, variation of the Black Album Tour kit with the chrome stands. Um, so it was made by Wallace and Barry. It was made in 82. It came as a two-piece. Man, I'm really getting into toys here. This is this is just <laughs> what, you, what you do when you build these kits. So it, it came yeah. as a two-piece. They were called Cuddle Ups. The thing's name is Omar, believe it or not. It came with a name. Omar. It came with a name. It's Omar. Okay. So, That's a good name. And uh, so there was, you know, room Rumors that it was given to him by Fleming. Um, uh, is it Rasmussen or no? It's the other Fleming. I forget the name right now. Sure. Larson, Larson. There you go. That was given to him by Fleming Larson, and he just hung it up there. So, and really don't know much more about it. But uh, so when I built my kits, like we talked about last summer, I I just had these pictures, and I just studied all kinds of toy uh, websites and Facebook groups to. <laughs> till, I, <laughs> till I found out what that monkey was and there he is it's awesome so, <laughs> it's awesome so it's a piece my of wife, drum history I, <laughs> <laughs> yes. we, we, I opened it i was like oh my god chris's package got here and it was this little box and i was like what is this and i opened it i was like oh my god yes and then to explain this to someone who doesn't know that why do i have this little stuffed monkey and to have three small kids being like, let me play with it. I'm like, this no. is mine. You get out of here. This is a collector's <laughs> item. Yeah. So uh, I, I figured you should have it. I appreciate everything. Invite me on the show. So it's a piece of history. It belongs with you. So yes, it is my pleasure. And I, I love it. And you didn't have to do it, but I'm very that. grateful and I love it. And it'll it'll be on a shelf as soon as the <laughs> absolute chaos of getting my uh, attic done, uh, redone is, is picked back up again with a new contractor. Oof. Not story for another day. But um. <laughs> All right, Chris. So today we we left off with part one, which obviously people should mm-hmm. go check that out if they want. Or if you're here now jumping in just basically to start with the very interesting um, St. Anger Ooh. kit <laughs> snare. That's where we're picking things up. So why don't we start there and um, just take it from St. Anger up till today. And you've got some cool stuff to share along the mm-hmm. way. I know personally. Um so uh, let's hop in. Okay, before we get going with Saint Anger, I just want to thank the people who commented. Uh, we had a we we're kind of hung up on what kit Lars was using to record uh, some, some some song in um, Load and Reload. It was an AI kit. We had asked it was an AI. That, yeah, we had asked yes. that question. Overwhelming responses. So thanks to everybody who responded with that and helped yes. us answer that question. Um, but let's get into Saint Anger. And what can you say about Saint Anger? But uh, snare drum. That is the word snare drum. Everybody wants to know. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> that, I mean, just let me ask drum. you before before we start. You are a diehard Metallica guy. Uh, love it. But like, what is your initial thought when you heard that snare drum? <sighs> Awful. <laughs> Honestly, okay. I mean, I mean, I I know they tried something new, and you got to give them yeah. credit, you know. But I, it, it's just not my cup of tea. And I will put out there that there was a there was a um, somebody on YouTube back in two thousand fifteen who redid the entire album, but they mixed it properly. I think it was called St. Anger 2015. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. When you listen to St. Anger, to me, this is my opinion, when it's mixed properly and it's got a you know regular sounding snare, it's it's it sounds amazing. The songs were really yeah. heavy. It was just, it was great. But like I said last time, I know they tried something new. It's definitely not for me. I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> It's um, I mean, I re-listened to it a couple of days ago because the song is cool and it's yeah. heavy and mm-hmm. it's it, it rocks. It's, it but was like, a good album, but it's bizarre. The yeah. snare, I will say it's not even like like it's bad, but it's also not like it's like uh, it's hard to describe. Like that's a bad snare on a major, major studio album. It's weird. The choice yeah. of like the ringiness mm-hmm. and the it almost makes me think of like, you know, Slipknot era with like hitting things with baseball bats on like, yeah. uh, you know, the, those steel 50 gallon drums or whatever. And I'm like, were they going for like that kind of right. sound or, or 
And yeah. and I, re- I remember discussing, I think it was episode two, I had read something back then, I believe, that he was listening to a lot of Lamb of God, and maybe he was influenced by that. But um, sure. let's take a step back, because everybody talks yeah. about that St. Anger snare. But if we take a step back to like, I think it was 2000, when the I Disappear song came out from the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. Yep. It wasn't quite as ringy, but we had that St. Anger snare. So when you look at the video, you know, you have the uh, the Tama Belbrass PL465 Belbrass snare, but I, I doubt that's what it was recorded on. That was probably just the video. But when that song came out, it was kind of mimicking what was going to come, what was to be with the St. Anger snare. <laughs> so yeah. I think that kind of st- started a little earlier on than St. Anger, but, you know, not as ringy, but it, it's there. So go back, take a listen, and you'll see what I'm talking about with that sound. So, yeah. and you know, I really didn't like that sound either, but they, that's them. They tried something. It's their music, their art, and um, that's part of history you know, now. So what can nothing, you say? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Like right. if it, if people liked it, it could have been like, oh my God, that changed right. heavy metal snare drums uh, forever. Mm-hmm. But it's, it it's right. It's kind of going down <laughs> the same path as the uh, Injustice for All album with the no bass. What do you yeah. do now? You, you can't change it now. It's part of history. So it's that's yeah. what was going on at the time. And that that's what it is. Some like it, some don't. See, I love Injustice for All. I don't care at all about the bass because I'm, you know, I'm a drummer and I love yeah. it. But then when yeah. you get to St. Anger, I don't like the snare and other people probably love it. You know, the, the newer generation that picked it up. So. So when you discuss Saint Anger, you've got to you've got to talk about a couple things. First of all, you know, it's a really kind of weird time for them. You know, everybody everybody's seen the movie. If you haven't, you know, watched the movie, you'll you'll learn some things. But uh, James was yep. in and out. Of, well, I don't think he was in and out, but he was. He went into rehab during the recording. Things changed, so there is two separate places this album was recorded. You know, first the first half, I believe, in two thousand one. San Francisco, there's kind of like a, I, I think it's a state park now, but it's also military barracks. It's called Presidio, Presidio, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And they rented that out at the time in, in uh, 2001. It was said they didn't want any uh, modern comforts. They didn't want to paint the walls, put in new furniture, anything. They wanted the aggression, the raw aggression to come out on this album. So part one is recorded there. I mean, it's you can see that in the movie. And I don't know if we got any uh, solid music or any music that would end up on St. Anger on it. I, I heard a couple riffs in there, you know, some kind of monster. They were writing that and recording that in the movie and you could hear it in Presidio. But mm-hmm. uh, this is this is the first part where it started. So before they moved on to their headquarters. So I guess we got to start there and yep. uh, discuss that kit. So Well, and it's, <clears throat> it's so some kind of monster is really interesting, but man, it is like... It's just like a band that's been a, together for so long and that is like like Lars and James are like <laughs> the guys. I mean they yeah. they do everything together but there's really just so much so um, much going on and that's when on, on top of all things Jason had left and and we yeah. know Bob Rock filled in on bass for that album. So it was like I was saying last episode it's just muddy, it's all over the place and on top of everything when we go into the headquarters uh, the headquarters that they're still in currently. Now we're in a warehouse too, so there's all kinds of drum gear there that's not even being used to record with. That's just where he's storing all his stuff. So we'll get into that in the second part. Yeah, but we're, we're you know we're we're walking that line there. So yeah, but so let's talk about Presidio. Presidio. It's a little four piece kit, you know. Um, so the kick drum. I see two different kick drums used. I see a Thomas Star Classic Maple Silver Sparkle. Uh, Pretty much probably the same one he lo- used on the load tour kit, uh, 22 by 16. We could see that in the picture. You know, we could see the uh, Star Classic Performer badge. Yeah. And the, then. Yep. It's a cool looking badge. Yeah. And with the black rims, uh, the bass cool. drum hoops that he's always used. And also I see another kick drum. It looks to be a 20 by 18 Star Classic. I think it. I think it's either um, Antique Walnut or Black Cherry, the color, and it's got green hoops. But I could tell that's also a star classic. And yes. I mean, the green hoops, I mean, they kind of look a little weird to me, but you're in the studio. Who cares? Just, <laughs> that looks like just having fun yeah. with mixing and matching right. things and trying uh, different I used stuff. I have this same finish star classic kit 
and he probably has the higher end, yeah. whatever. You know how there's like Star Classic mm-hmm. and then there's like Performer, categories. Birch, and Maple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had the Performer. So he definitely probably has the higher end one, but it's got that bass drum, um, the tom mount right there on the right. bass drum that right. is uh, pretty. It, w- it was a good mounting system, but mm-hmm. like. Um, I believe that came on he- the. Heavy. Yeah, I think that came on the Rockstars too. I had a Rockstar that had that mount too on the bass drum that never had any okay. problems with it, you know? No. Like I know the ones in the Grand Star are kind of quirky. You have like a wing nut and then you have a square kind of tension rod on the other side. Very hard to adjust, but these were great. You know, just very to, modern. Yeah, more advanced. Now we're more modern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So looks to me to be a 20 by 18. It looks a little smaller. Hard to tell. I know, you know, sometimes, you know, I mentioned these sizes. I'm just, you know, we're just conversing on it and trying to get an idea. I know a lot of people hit me in the comments about sizes. So, <laughs> but I yeah. looks like a 20 by 18, honestly. Sure. <laughs> Best I can yeah. do on that. So in Presidio, there was a moving blanket over the front of it. I'm going to say for sound. You know, I was kind of arguing with myself in the beginning. I thought it was a conspiracy. I thought it was a pearl kit or something and they had the head covered up so it wouldn't be recorded. But let me tell you why I thought that. Now, let's take a deeper look into these toms. These toms are on a pearl OptiMount system. You can see that clearly from the photos. So, yeah. And there's another photo on another side right there, the photo that you just pulled up. Pearl pearl uh, OptiMount system lars mm. playing pearl there you go <laughs> there you go more of our csi work yes on, uh... <laughs> but honestly they probably rented it you know who knows how it came to be but that's definitely a pearl opti mount system so like i said it was for months i'm like fighting with myself oh it's a conspiracy it was playing pearl but they're not pearl drums those are gretsch usa customs again now, I don't know if this is the older model or the newer model where they went from Jasper to Keller shells. I don't have an answer on that. But those yeah. those are definitely Gretsch shells, at least the Rack Tom and the Floor Tom with the Pearl OptiMount system. So Thomas so, Star Classic kick drums, drum, mm-hmm. kick drum, Gretsch. Gretsch Rack Tom, which the first Rack one Tom. that looks to be a 13 by 10. And I believe the floor tom looks to be a 14 by 13 to me. We have that picture there with James playing it. And we can yep. also tell that's on a Pearl OptiMount system. And I believe the Pearl yes. number, I think it was a T98W Tom stand was what he okay. was using. So not too yep. too familiar with the Pearl stuff. but No, but the packing blanket thing is like, from a studio standpoint, super common. Like yeah. that is like very, very common right. for like getting, uh, you know, isolation of just mm-hmm. the kick drum so and that's um, that's what i learned after doing the research but in the beginning i'm like oh we had it there to cover the pearl logo so tama would yeah be it's a, like that that's just you know that yeah, didn't happen like buddy so. rich playing a five <laughs> right. snare drum when he played for slingerland and got in huge trouble but in the studio like we just i mean he's got the sabian hats so it's right. like he's kind of just it's the studio. studio so it is what it is but that's what it was i fought with myself for a while did the research it's scratch tom's oh. star classic kick drum and uh, so let's get into the snare. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Atlanta Drum Shop. Save the date for the upcoming Mike Mangini Masterclass happening on September 17th. This masterclass is an up close and personal clinic with the one and only Mike Mangini. Tickets are $200 a piece and it is open to all skill levels from beginner to expert. Seating is very limited though, so reserve your spots ASAP by emailing Eckert, that's E C K E R T, at atlantadrumshop.com. Again, Eckert, E C K E R T, at atlantadrumshop.com. September 17th, Mike Mangini Masterclass, Atlanta Drum Shop. Thank you to Atlanta Drum Shop for sponsoring this episode. Let's get into yep. the snare. So, <laughs> the snare. I, I at least see between the both of the locations, between Presidio and between the headquarters in San Rafael, I see at least five snares in all these different pictures. Um, you know, the consensus is that he recorded the album on a Ludwig uh, Vista Light, uh, Blue Vista Light. Um, am I pronouncing okay. that right, Bart? Is it a Vista? Vista Light, yeah. Vista Light. Oh, yeah, Blue yeah, Vista, Vista Light. Yep. I think it's a 14 by five and a half. Uh, that's the consensus. But I see all kinds of snares, so I don't know. It's impossible to know exactly which part, which song was recorded on which snare, especially when we see so many of them. But let's go back to hmm. Presidio because I'm jumping everywhere. So the one, yeah, you're fine. The one in the photo there is a Tama PL565 Bell Brass. It's off to the side. Sometimes we see it as the main snare. 
naturally it's your 14 by six and a half with the uh remo coated controlled uh sound um black dot uh snare head um also in presidio i've seen in a picture i've seen a gretch full range bell brass i've seen him using that too that's also a 14 by six and a half and there's also another picture with james james is actually playing the drums it looks to me to be a uh, tama artwood aw265 in the silver sparkle like the load torque kit, load and reload torque kit. again that looks to be a 14 by six and a half uh common common snare size so right there in the first half i at least see three different snares I know we didn't get much yeah. from this, you know. There, I know there was some uh, some demos that came out. I think uh, there was a rapper, uh, Ja Rule, did a sample on a Biker Boys movie. They did a sample with a Metallica song. You could check that out; it's on YouTube. Okay, um, cool. Kind of reminds me if you're like listening to the radio station and three or four stations cut in and out on the same channel. It just doesn't sound right, but that's my opinion. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's like not meant to be right. But yeah. there's a sample, and I know that was in the movie. They uh, they gave them access to that and so other than that i don't know what exactly we got out of that first half recording if you if you understand what i'm getting at i absolutely do and historically though the albums like black album and stuff like that it was like typically a ludwig black beauty Mm -hmm. all the way through right like he didn't do too much experimenting on the recording if i'm not mistaken right i think right? once i think around load and reload we, we started to see a couple different snares okay so sure. but now like and that's why we waited to do the second part with saint anger now things are just changing all the time everything this, especially the snares there's like four or five drum kits there's all these snares um also um we we're seeing LP uh, jam blocks, uh, the red ones, the mediums, and it's on a lighter duty stand, as we're seeing here in the picture. I think that is a H93B uh, lighter duty Thomas stand. You know, why do you need the the super heavy duties to hold up a jam block? But (laughs) (laughs) exactly. It's free. (laughs) Right. So there's that. And I'm not going to mention the stands. You know what they're using. I said them a million times last. (laughs) (laughs) But also in this first half, uh, they're still using Zildjian symbols at this time. Um, It's hard to see the hat, the hi-hats here. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the Sabian because the Sabian plays such a big part. In this in this particular in the first half of recording St. Anger, it's it's hard to tell what the hi hats are from the pictures, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were the Sabian or if they were the Z Custom Dino Beats. But clearly I see Zildjian crashes and I see a Zildjian ride. Um Yep. Very flat ride. Like meaning yes. not not a not a flat ride mm-hmm. with like no bell, like a model, but like this ride is so perfectly flat, mm-hmm. almost like Travis Barker pop punk style i don't really remember lars doing that that much this seems like a different yeah this this is goes back to they're trying all kinds of different stuff here all kinds of different stuff probably rotten Mm -hmm. yeah hard to to (laughs) to really ride on yeah 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 Yeah. so Um, cool hi-hat picture here lars and uh, the very heel up the picture we're looking at the significance of that is uh it's hard to see from most pictures until i found this one that he appears to be playing the first generation iron cobra the uh, I think it's the HP ninety uh, P, the first generation okay. Iron Cobra, um, aluminum board, black letter, black inlays, uh, really good pedals. I love those pedals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I said hi hat. I meant his kick pedal. Now that I'm looking at it, it's obviously. yeah. So I, I assume yeah. it's the it's the Iron Cobra hi hat pedal too. You know, some yeah. of these things are hard to get a hold of pictures. Like we said last time, there's not much media. I mean, there there happened to be a lot of media in this time period because they did a motion picture on it. But, you know, still they're cutting around, moving around. So you got to do the best you can with what you can find. So, but that picture there tells me that he's using those first model Iron Cobras, probably to record the same anger. Yeah. Playing barefoot. I mean, I play with socks on. I hate playing with shoes. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I do too. Uh, It's, why do it? And I know there's some metal drummers. There's some metal drummers who use like, they wear combat boots or something. And good for them. But I'm like. Yeah, that guy, uh, barefoot or socks. Pete Sandoval is amazing with those giant combat boots. (laughs) (laughs) He's like a computer as fast as he plays. And then you look at he's in combat boots. So, so where do we go from here? I guess at this point, uh, James goes to rehab and things take a break for, I think about a year, almost a year and a quarter. 
And wow. yeah, and at this time, at least we know from the movie, they give up. They were leasing Presidio. They were leasing a studio in the army barracks. They give it up. You know, they let the lease run out, whatever happens, and they get their own headquarters now um, that they're still in to this day. I think it's, in, yeah, I know it's in San Rafael, California. And, you know, it's just this giant warehouse. They store their gear. They have their studios set up. They have all kinds of flags and fan mail, uh, stuff fans have mailed in. Just a really cool awesome. space. Yeah. There's yeah. paint on the walls outside. I think there's like some St. Anger images. At the time, they, they probably changed it. But so basically, they move into their own headquarters, their own warehouse, and they stay there. And it's this way today. <laughs> Still the same. So James that comes was out of the re- beginning of them having that warehouse. Yes, it was about 2000, 2000 okay. so, somewhere between 2001 to when James gets out of rehab in 2002. Now Got we it. see him in that movie at that warehouse. So I believe this is all new at the time. And at the warehouse, man, there's some drum kits. They are everywhere. And, and that's the thing I was talking about earlier. Now, not only are we making an album here, we're storing all this gear. So there's a lot of gear floating around in that movie that we can see. A lot of yeah. different things, a lot of variations. Um, so I believe this is the main kit it was recorded on. And as we were speaking, Billy Harrington had mentioned uh, Jelly Bean Kit, which is a great analogy. So when we take yeah. a look at this thing, the first thing we see are the Thomas Starr Classic Silver Sparkle Kick Drums, 16 by 24, the same ones from the Load and Reload Tour Kit, which he has a tendency to do. A lot of these studio kits are just, you know, at least at this time later on, are just recycled tour kits, especially at this time. You know, back then, yeah. you know, we know the Justice Kick Drums were the the Master of Puppets uh, uh, Chrome Superstars. So this is not uncommon. But, you know, we, no. we, we see the Star Classics and it's got the black hoops, really good look. And um, the white Tama yeah. heads, you know, kind of the, uh, the uh, coated ambassador type heads for the front kicks and yep and then you start looking at the toms now which is which is new to me is i see him on this album playing three rack toms it's been after you know at least after um the wherever i may roam tour it's always been the two toms in the middle in the studio on tour everything for this album i see him with three rack toms yeah so I'm going to say it's probably a 10, 12, and a 13. The first two are that, you know, Thomas Starr classic uh, marine blue kind of fade. The, the third one is a, is just black. And the floor tom looks to be like, uh, you know, like your natural maple. I think back then it was called like bird's eye maple or something, natural sure. maple. But uh, I think I think it to be a 10 by 9, a 12 by 10, you know, a 13 by 11. And a 16 by 16. I'm sure there'll be corrections, and that's fine. It's hard to tell the depth, but those are the diameters 10, 12, 13, and 16, it looks like to me. Also, all Tama. We're now not using Gretsch on this. On it's this kit. All, yeah. On this, on on, this kit. On this on particular this. kit, which I think carried the bulk of St. Anger. You know, I, I could okay. be wrong. You know, there's a, there's a, uh, it, it's a big process recording. And like we were saying, things change all the time. Yeah. We'll see him as we go on in this episode sitting at different kits. But I think this was the main one. Now, if we peer in between the 12 and the 13-inch Tom, we could see that Ludwig Blue Vista Light Tom there. Or, I'm sorry, yes. Blue Vista Light Snare. I see. Which uh, drummers know, and if anybody's not a drummer is watching, the way you would achieve that St. Anger snare is just pretty much take the snare wires and throw the clutch and just remove the snare wires from the, situ- from the, uh, from the, uh, the snare, basically. So now you're just playing with a small shallow drum i you know i mean obviously i'm a drummer i've played my whole life i didn't really think about that yeah. i was like god how'd they get that sound because you don't think of mm-hmm. it, it there's a little bit of a snare bite to it but i guess maybe he's Tiny just doing bit. kind of a rim really yeah. tight yeah i mean yeah. that's that's what i would i i would imagine or, or and i've heard rumors that the snare was off um, when i say snare was off I'm, i I mean snare wires. snare wires so the snare yeah. wires were off he didn't realize that they recorded he's like i kind of like that and then you hear the rumor about the lamb of god thing so it, it seems like maybe it was an accident but they ended up like he ended up liking it they went with it but that's how at least in the at least you know, in the beginning, that's how you would achieve that sound is throwing the wires. I mean, I know there's effects and there's things that go into recording yeah. these albums, but basically, you know, the, the bass, that's how you would get it. So rumor has it that it's that Ludwig that that carried the bulk of that album. But like I said, 
there's so many snares going around in these pictures. Um, wow. it's even on the yeah. second half. Ludwig is like, oh boy, that wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> no, so all right, so that, you were that saying, was us with the Black Beauty, but that yeah, yeah, wasn't remember us the Black Beauty. Anger. That's us. <laughs> so, so just to summarize, though, the the infamous, let's say, very popularly thought bad sound of the Saint Anger snare drum is a Ludwig vi- blue Vista light with the snares turned off. Probably some mixing stuff going on yes. too, but that's the the base level of it. Is that that most, got us that that famous most, sound? Most likely, there's other snares right. floating around, like I said, but I, I I believe it to be that most likely. But wow! And there you go, <laughs> mystery uncovered. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unsolved mysteries part two. So uh, another uh, new thing here with this jelly bean kit is we see Zildjian K's now. Uh, the dark yes. crashes, and you see a mix of some Zildjians. Uh, I'm, well, yes, Zildjians, but you see uh, his normal projection crashes, medium crashes. And again, I see the Sabians. So like we said last episode, I don't know why, but the Sabians are there. Plain as day. Yeah. Right? And it looks like a Zill Bell back here. Yep. Like, the, yep. Or I know there's different versions. What, what are like they the like? Ice, ice Bell. Yeah, whatever. Ice Bell. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, we start seeing splashes. 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 I know I know. Yep. we used them on Load and Reload, but now he's got the smallest splashes on the heavy have you stands on planet earth <laughs> it looks wrong it's just like but why not guy right? with <laughs> a giant body and a tiny head kind of thing yeah. uh, so we've got these small uh splashes on the tom of titan stands i'm not going to give you the model number just check the rest of the episodes i didn't stop <laughs> i noticed i didn't stop mentioning so That's but anyway right. two two yeah. splashes um probably a 10 and a 12 I think on the on the on the load and reload tour, I think it was like a twelve inch splash. So it's probably a ten and twelve splash on this one. And again, the uh, first generation Iron Cobra pedals, most likely the same thing with the hi hat stand. So that that is pretty much the first kit we see. Out of, Looks like a floor tom uh, maybe back sitting back here again, yeah, just kind of doing some another zoom in. floor tom. Right. Again, Bongos, we don't know. If, maybe yeah. The, we don't know if he's recording on that or again, if it's they're storing it. I know there's a picture of James on it. it oh, was, oh duh. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, I back think there. Yeah, you're oh, getting I see. Yes. a profile shot of that. So that's yes. another one I want to discuss. Again, we've got all these kits. We don't know what was recorded where, but you see, first of all, we see the Tama Bell Briss there, PL 565. Um, we see that smaller kick drum we discussed at Presidio. The uh, looks to be a 20 by 18 with the green hoops on it. The uh, yep. Thomas Star Classic, and then we have more of the Silver Sparkle uh, Toms that uh, probably used on Load and Reload, or it's the same color that was used on Load and Reload. And we see a Zildjian Earth Plate. And thank you for people for comment for commenting in the first episode. Somebody had yes. mentioned those are Earth Plates. Didn't know the name, but it's an Earth Plate. Yes, got a lot of emails saying yes. YouTube comment, Earth Plate, Earth Plate, Earth Plate. Earth plate. Yeah. Very, so thank you for very those. Very cool. <laughs> yep. And, and like a little tiny Timbali kind of thing yes. here. Yes, up, up top of the, uh, which looks to be a 12 by uh, 11 to me. See a little Timbali. And that's just like a little bop kit. You know, I don't know if, uh, if anything was recorded on that, if they're messing around. Again, like I said, this is also now where they're storing all their gear. This is headquarters. So this you, is like, you kind of thread just be that hanging line. Out Right, and James could have just played around and been like, "Oh, I'm going to set up a drum set for me yeah. to play." Don't we don't we don't know? So, and unless you yeah. get a hold of Bob Rock, it might be impossible to find that out. But looks like hot rods or something um, down here. They got, oh like, the yeah, like brush the sticks. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a picture of a bag behind the let's call it the jelly bean kit. This is a picture of a bag with mallets and stick brushes and all kinds of yeah, stuff, okay. different stuff that they're trying. And then you have that little tiny bob kit that James was sitting on him behind him and the Sabian symbols or uh, Sabian yep. hi-hats that everybody asks about. And DW Clutch, I know we discussed that in episode one, which there is some news on that clutch. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay. It's not a cannon. It took me years to find it, but DW does make that clutch. All right. So we just spoke about the bob kit. And now uh, now we got to talk about the third kit that we see in this album, um, which again, Thomas Star Classic Silver Sparkle, just like Load and Reload. Um, you know, it's got the Emperor Remo heads on the top. Uh, the snare, let's let's bring a fourth snare into the mix. I at least see five or six on, on this album. It's the yeah. Lars Ulrich model, 1465 uh, diamond plate. 
Everybody okay. knows this snare. I also see that on this album. I see that on that third kit here. Now he's back yeah. down to two toms. It, it directly mimics, you know, minus the two floor toms, it directly mimics the load and reload tour kit. You know, I love the silver sparkle. I, 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 I love do too. sparkle finishes. I know people, you know, they're kind of classic, but this is like Joe Morello kind of classic jazzy mm-hmm. look, but or, or Nick Mason from Pink right. Floyd. This is like live at Pompeii kind of look. I mean, it's I, I think it's awesome. No, um, I, I do, too. And I think that the, the fact that he used the black uh, hoops on the kick drums and the kind of, you know, the white coated front head with the black Tama logos just makes it pop more. So oh, yeah. I, I think that besides the 72 season, that's one of my favorite, favorite kits that he's used, even though, we, you know, he cut it down a little, but really, really beautiful kit. So, yeah. So another thing I'll mention, if you look to his right where the China has sat for a couple of years, he's using a stack now. He's using yeah. a Zildjian stack. Again, probably just trying new things. But that's that's something, you know. Did you ever think you would hear that Lars Ulrich using a stack? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, this just, seems definitely like the, you know, an experiment. I mean, they're talking to, they've been talking to therapists. Yeah. They're working through things. <laughs> we've, and it's, we've it's a got whole new earth plates and jam blocks. And now we got a stack, which nothing against stacks. They sound amazing, but it's just, oh, not, no, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. When I think about him and Metallica, I don't think of a stack, but there it is. No. <laughs> and he also, Cut his hair even more and bleached it blonde oh, here as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I don't have anything to say on that. <laughs> no. It, it was a weird time for them. All I can say is live, laugh, Lars on that one. So, <laughs> just something Get your sticker different. today. <laughs> just something he did. But yep. cut it, dyed it blonde, whatever. So, yep. But, uh, and, and are, is there less symbols now than before, or is am I there is, is an optical illusion? No, okay. there is less. This is kind of mimicking that tour style, but again, it's right yeah. behind the jelly bean kit, it's mic'd up. You can see everybody playing together, you could see the soundboards, the mixing room. So, we got to include it. Um, like I said, you're, you're threading that line of warehouse studios, so you're gonna see a lot of different things. So yeah, this mimic yep. this mimics the load kit and the, the reload kit, and it's a lot less symbols. We see uh, your regular Zildjian A's. We see the dark crashes are starting to come in, and it's just a lot of different stuff going on with these yep. kits. And let's look in the background, and we'll talk about the fourth kit. We see what do we see in the background? Looks to me like the Green Star Classic. Yeah, the, the uh, I don't know what the proper name for it. Uh, Emerald Green Star Classic. The Saint Anger Tour kit is in the background. It doesn't appear to be mic'd up. What, what it reminds me of is, hey, we're going to ship you this out in advance. This is what you wanted for your tour. They kind of set it up to get the look and the feel of it. It's just in the background, you know. Uh, you know, this yeah. just something we set up to, to see, and maybe they did. We're just not going to go up on stage and not try it out first or see what it looks like. So there it is. It's set up. I know we had at least seven of them, so we know there's more. But wow, uh, yeah, you know they had man stuff going to another town, and they would send stuff to if they did radio shows or like Howard Stern shows. I don't know if that one was on Howard Stern, but he they have been before. But there's just that's right. So but it would much. be the next. The ne- yeah. all the gear goes ahead, right? And then right. This one's here, so there's there's always moving exactly. Ahead. And we know um, we know by seventy two seasons. I mean, there's four, and then he's got the trucks going to the next town. There's probably eight of them. So. You've got the endorsements. Why not? It's a huge show. So no, you, it's I think the, the Rolling, Rolling Stones do that as well. I think a lot of bands do that. I yeah. mean, that seems if you're on that level, you're not. Right. It's smart, know. too. It makes things easier. You know, why are you going to yep. tear down and then wait for everybody to get up there when you could just do it in advance? But, you know, I don't run I don't run a mega band and or not in a mega <laughs> band, so I can't tell you for sure. But I see. I don't either. I see the tour kit in the back. So yep. and then some snares behind him here. Looks snares. like we've got our snares that's, stacked up. Yep, that's that PL uh, five six five with the brass hoops. Uh, we see that in the background. I see some timbali stacked up. Yep, and there's other pictures with more toms, uh, blue marine fades, black uh, star classic toms, and then there's just a crate full of symbols and bags. <laughs> yep. There's all kinds of gear going around. Again, you know, this is also their warehouse. So they're storing everything they own now in this warehouse, which is cool yeah. to me. You know, you got everything oh there. I would love, I just, love to take a tour of that say, place. <laughs> man, imagine letting you loose in there. Oh, and you could wow. Just, just to look. You could just go through everything. Oh, yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. But um, so that that's what it is. And I've heard, you know, I've seen a video with um, their gear manager, Zach, and it was like, you know, the band has three 
different spaces set up and mic'd at all times so they can go here and try this and try that. And I know there's a multitude of rooms and there's just all kinds of stuff going on. So I'm glad we waited for part two to discuss St. Anger. So I, cause I always say it, but you don't want to be two hours in and then be like, right. now we're going to start this. That's happened with every gear episode, but, uh, what's happening with the caution, the caution tape here, probably just a joke or maybe just fun. Don't yeah. go in there and mess with the settings. You know, maybe, maybe the gear guys had a tendency or the, uh, the, uh, the text to adjust stuff or change things. Don't go in there. Don't go in. Yep. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a joke. Who knows? Is that a white marine pearl snare or is that a... It's definitely a white marine snare on one of their uh, road cases back there with uh, Timbali stocked on top of it and Tom's. There's just, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I, I haven't seen that particular one on a stand where he was playing, so I don't even know if that was included. And that's what I was talking could about. It, it yeah, could be. Yeah. It could be and we'll never know. Looks like we got a little picture here of a drummer, maybe Lars, with an X through it with hanging an, on a stand. Yeah. If you really want to see something funny, if we go back to Presidio, there's a poster of Sully from uh, Godsmack on the wall. Why? <laughs> you could, you could oh, see, is it this one yeah, back here? Yeah, there's a couple shots I've seen of it, and it's like, why? <laughs> I know we've seen Kip Winger, and uh, you know we've seen yeah. Jethro Tull up there, but... Here's Sully. <laughs> they just like to goof on other guys, I guess. And yeah, yeah. just having fun. That's funny. And I think now, well, I guess I think this will be number five. Let's talk about this kid again. Uh, looks to me like your uh, Silver Sparkle Thomas Star Classic. This one doesn't have the white kind of coated head. It's just got your your, your run of the mill black uh, Tama head with the white Tama logo. I see yeah. one one marine blue pearl, uh, one marine blue Star Classic Tom, one black. And it looks to me like another silver sparkle floor, Tom. Probably, you know, you're 10, 12, and 16. I can't really make out the snare, but it's there's not even double bass on this. So what is this? Are they screwing around? Uh, was You know, is it just some of their gear? Uh, kind of hard to yeah. explain what this is. But if you, if you take a look, at least to my left, you see the uh, blue Vista Light snare again. Yeah, mic'd up. It, mic'd up. So there's just a lot going on for St. Anger. Maybe maybe they're like putting the kits together at this point, but it wouldn't go in that order though. With right. The toms. And there's no there's only a hi hat on this. There's no symbols. There's only one symbol. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean so who knows what's going on. But I figured I would bring it up and mention it. Just the allure of St. Anger. There's just all, <laughs> all this stuff going on. Where did that snare sound come from? So there you go. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, much it. I, <laughs> never would have guessed uh because i'm coming at this again as like i like lo- i really like metallica mm-hmm. but again you're you're deep 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 diving into this if you asked me to guess the snare on there i would have said some sort of a metal tama uh, probably steel ring. tama just yeah. ringy most people but, would man a blue vista light which that blue those i have an episode um uh, with Jim DeRigatis, I hope I'm say, remembering his last name correct, about the history of acrylic drums, and it was really interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, the blue was a super popular yeah. color. Nine times out of ten, if you go to a pawn shop, there's a blue Vistalite right. set sitting there. But um, And isn't it crazy how it comes full circle? <laughs> comes full circle. Yeah, one of the most the Ludwig. popular metal bands using a, a Ludwig <laughs> blue Vistalite. <laughs> yeah. Poor, I don't know. poor yeah. Ludwig. <laughs> <laughs> not not that album. Come on, that's not all, it's that all, album. It's all good though. It's all good. What was the reception of Saint Anger like? And let's you know talk about it comes out and I I, I don't know if this is publicly known, but how did that had to be an ego hit to Lars? You know, um, uh, well we can we can get into a lot of things. I'm going to try and be diplomatic on it. I know, of course, you know back then I'll get into it a little. I, I, I'm a super fan. You should you should know back then. You know everybody knows about Napster and the way I felt about it, the way most of the public felt about it was, you know, yeah, I use Napster, right? But here I am, just like today, I'm sitting there downloading Metallica songs in a Metallica T-shirt with Tama drums and three or four copies, uh, cassettes, CDs. I've got all the stuff. I just needed something to listen to at my computer, you know, so I didn't have to play a cassette and play a CD just because, you know, back then you're playing video games, you know, yep. and you just wanted to listen to music. And, and, and what do I listen to? You know, Metallica, Pantera, Slayer. I've got it all here. So that's why I was downloading. But then here I am too, trying to get into a concert. So as a fan, I was upset about it, but... 
when I also when I think about how they they what they said, it is about control. You know, it's your art. You do want to control it. You don't want to get out get there it. when yeah. you don't want to get out there. I make these stupid covers and I don't want them getting out before I'm ready. So I understand yeah. where Lars was coming from, but it was just a yeah. weird time. It was just, uh, you know, waters that we've never tread before back then, you know, We're a road we never day. went down. It, yeah. No, it changed the music industry right. forever. We're still in that world where now mm-hmm. it's just like a paid service. But I, I, and I, and I don't take for granted that like, I work with like a couple guys who are younger uh, and they're like 19 and I'll say something and they'll be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, like, like they've never seen, they've never seen Austin Powers. And I was like, Oh God, oh, how is that humanly possible? But anyway, so Napster, cause these, they, people literally were not born yet. Like look into it right. file sharing basically started the illegally right. downloading music hey. pirating i mean mm-hmm. you'd you'd buy dvds and it'd be like pi- pirating's illegal yeah yeah be that that commercial but um lars was l- the face of it right yeah and, and you know it's, it's it's good in a way but uh, you have to remember too back then we would put tape over the cassette and record stuff off the radio you know, if we didn't have yes. a blank cassette, you could just put tape over the little indents and we would record off the radio and we yeah. would record. I remember recording wrestling when I was a kid off pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. We did, sure. we did it all the time. So when they came and they said, you can't do this, it was just a whole new thing. It was like, what? What do you mean? But what what is interesting is like um, I know someone who does like video game emulation and they play like the old games but on their computer. And it's it's he's like. Well, legally, you know, it's all whatever you're not supposed to. But if you own the physical copy of it, but right. you are then playing a downloaded version of it, that's supposed to be okay. It's supposed to be okay. So, so, so what you're doing is you have it on cassette and maybe you have a vinyl of it, but yeah. you want a digital copy of right. it. Right. And then you're sitting in their T-shirt. You're trying to get tickets to their show. And nowadays, I mean, I'm sitting behind all this Tama gear that they, yes. you know, that I bought because of Lars. It was frustrating back then. But at the same yeah. time, I, I I really do understand where it was coming from. So I can't make him out to be a, a, a total bad guy. But that's what people were feeling back then. At least people yeah. in my uh, uh, age age range generation in high school, that's yeah. what we were feeling. So so to to tie that back, it it is basically this that was sort that was around the time of Saint Anger. Yeah, right. Right after that, I disappear song that I talked about. Yeah. I disappear was the one that got leaked. So it was about two thousand. I was in high school. I graduated in two thousand one. So that's where we were in age range. So I mean, you know, I had Thomas. Okay. I had Thomas back then, and, I, and that, that's how we pretty much felt. You know. Yeah. But yeah. so I do get yeah. it. I do get it where they were coming from. But he really did. I mean, you can't deny he he took the <laughs> he took the heat for that one. He was the. You know? I mean, like I said, he was the face of it. It was Lars versus. Yeah. I mean, there was like South Park episodes. It oh. was like he was the face of right of, of that. So to answered the question the reception of it was not great and it, it was a bad time it was where, not great it was a different time i think and history has has painted a different picture now as you know we could see where he was coming from where most musicians were coming from they just yep. maybe they went about it the wrong way because nobody knew what we were dealing with and no because now musicians sell you know a uh, hundred thousand right. they, they have a hundred thousand streams and they make like four dollars or right. something like that and so. uh, i will i will uh, there was something I watched on Netflix. It was about the whole pirating thing in Napster. And it was, it was amazing how it happened. It was one guy in a North Carolina yeah. record pressing company who leaked everything. Wow. You got to, I think it's on Netflix. If you guys want to check that it doesn't really have anything to do with Metallica, but it's just so interesting to see how, yeah. how all these things got out there. And that's most likely how I disappear got out there. He would get the copies. Nobody guarded the copies and he would just start <laughs> selling them to people. <laughs> So, so that's on One Netflix. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. So that, wow. so that's 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 pretty much at least that's how I looked at it and the people you know in my age range. But uh, and it, yeah. it changed everything. It's completely different now. We have Spotify and all this stuff, and so yeah. uh, you know you know the story now. So <laughs> yeah, no, I, absolutely, and it's it's uh, it's a whole different world. But, yeah. So that is. Saint Anger, right. and again so, the recept, but famously the reception of the right. snare is like it. Be- it became a, it became a uh, running joke. Right, that's the point I was leading up to. I, I went so far beyond. I'm sorry, but no, what, what I was I saying. Like back, so yeah. after all that happened, and then Saint Anger came out, and I heard the mix and the snare. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then I was just kind of done for a while. You know, they're just part. I love Metallica. They're part of me. I'll never like be done with them. But I just needed a break at that time. 
You know, that that was my perception yeah. of saying anger. And, you know, the younger kids that I talk to, well, they're not young anymore, but they're like, you know, I'm like 42 and they're like 32. They're like, oh, I loved it. It was great. The guitars were tuned differently. And so different age groups have different uh, feelings about that album. So I'm not a guitarist and I never really, you know, thought about that. But, yeah, the guitars are different. I just know there's something about them I didn't like. Yeah. So, well, but it's like if if we if you played it for like if I played it for my wife, she'd probably just listen to it and not notice a snare or not notice. Right. We're, we're hyper focused right. on it. Musicians um, look at it differently than just you know your general your public. You know, I, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but again, good for them for trying yeah. something. Uh, it was a bad period of time for them, but uh, they, they kept going. They kept going. They kept going. They came out of it. And it's better to have them here today than, than than to not if they had broken up. So if if we got anything from that movie, it's like I'm I'm just glad that they're still doing it today. Absolutely. You know, literally, Absolutely. like next week they're going to be back here in, in Massachusetts at uh, sixty plus whatever they are. They're still doing it. So I'm glad we yeah. got through that time period. So yes, yes. So that's Saint Anger. So, so that's Saint Anger. Where do we so go then, from there? So then they went on the, the their long uh, world tour, and then they released Death Magnetic, with which in itself was something completely different. Uh, Death Magnetic, you know, it was, they were kind of like, how would you say they're, they're coming back to old Metallica. They were getting back to their old kind of music that they used to write. Um, and right off the bat, Bob Rock is gone. They used him for many years, almost, what would you say, 10, 15 years at that point? They're not with Bob wow. Rock on this yeah. album. Now they went with Rick Rubin, which the only place I know Rick Rubin from is Slayer. Because that's just you know yeah. the music I listen to, and when I heard Rick Rubin was going to do this, I'm like, wow, that's weird. You know, you got Slayer, which is so different than Metallica, but now he's going to produce this next one, which I heard he was kind of a you know a hands off producer, and he let them kind of take the ball and do whatever they had to do. But yeah, I, I, heard that too. yeah I remember, you know, back then I had um, I think Sirius and XM worked together; they were separate. So I think I had the XM portion, and they had something called Mandatory Metallica. And yes, I remember. Yeah, that. interviews would pop up. I think every couple minutes or every couple hours. And I remember Lars and Kirk and all them saying, "You know, we're listening to Master of Puppets. We're going back. We're listening to Injustice for All. And we're, we're getting inspired from that. And that's what's going to come out on this next album. So it was kind of just a change. You know, things are going to change, from they're going to get back to their old style. So. Yeah. <laughs> So when that's promising, right? And, yeah. and everybody's was excited. It, it was, you know, it was different. It wasn't Saint Anger at all. It wasn't Injustice for All or Master Puppets, but it wasn't Saint Anger. So it did change again. It, it kind of evolved. You know, it wasn't a terrible album, but yeah. it, it just they did what they said they were going to do, and and that's what it was billed as. It was them getting back to their old form, and yeah, it kind of was. You know, I mean, you you go so far from like all right from grace with that, you know, with St. Anger mm -hmm. that you kind of, you can't fully go like, whoa, we're way back and it's right. perfect. And it's like we were mm -hmm. when we were in our twenties. Right. So you kind of need to correct it a little mm -hmm. bit and like people be like, all right, that was a good album. Oh, yeah. We got, you know, we like, got death magnetic. It was cool. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it's not my top, but you know, it, it was better than St. Anger. Uh, that, yeah. that's it's Metallica. Good. Right. Yeah. But it was something different. Bob Rock's out, Rick Rubin's in. Um, and now things are, According when it comes to the drums, at least things are pretty much going to stay this way up until today, at least in the studio what we're, what we're discussing. So they're not trying many variations. There's a couple different snares, but for for Death Magnetic, the first thing I notice is Gretsch kick drums, twenty four by okay. sixteen. Now you could say that these are the same exact kick drums that were used on the Black Album in that kind of. I think we said it was antique maple or, or whatever color it was. But there was a rumor at this time that Lars liked him so much that he bought his own Gretsch kick drums or Gretsch drums. So I don't okay. I don't know if the drum doctor provided them or if those are his. But that's what he's using for Death Magnetic. 16 by 24 Gretsch kick drums. Now, if they are the ones from the Black Album, then they are from, I believe it was Jasper, the furniture company, that the USA Customs, the older style Jasper shells. And if, if you didn't watch, you know, episode one, Gretsch used to have a furniture company named Jasper make their shells. So I'll just tell you that. So famous drum company. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do, we'll do an episode yep. on them at some point. I'll just touch yeah. on that quick. I don't want to get too deep in that. And uh, so, so that's what we got for the kick drums. And Still to this day, uh, for Rack Toms, we are using those green sparkle uh, Thomas Starr Classic uh, St. Anger Tour Kit Rack Toms and Floor Toms. 
uh, probably, you know, your, your 10, your 12, six. I know he used two 16s. I think it was a 16 by 14 and a 16 by 18 on the floor, Tom. So he got, he got rid of the 18 by 16 that he used uh, load and reload. And he started using that, those uh, 16 by 14, 16 by 16s. And they were the green sparkle uh, right off the St. Anger tour kit. And still, yeah. still to this day, they are still mounted there. And there's little known about 72 seasons, but the few pictures that I did find, it's the same Toms that he used, he used for Death Magnetic. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. 72 seasons and hardwired. It's all pretty much the same rack Toms. All right. So when it comes to Death Magnetic, we spoke about the kick drums, the rack Toms, the floor Toms, the snares. I see two different snares used. Um, what I see is, first of all, like St. Anger, the PL565 Bell Brass with the brass hoops. I don't know if they're die cast or not. I believe they're die cast brass. I, I, I don't know for sure. But we see a second snare drum, and it's the BB156 Tama Bell Brass. It's the one from the 80s. And if you know anything about that, when they kind of just re-released it this year for Tama's big anniversary coming up, um, they, they did a couple things. They did the Tama Iron Cobras and like the 80s paint scheme. Uh, they released a line of superstars, and they, re- they re-released this snare. It's an old 80s Tama snare. So I see that snare and I see the uh, the PL-565. Those are the two main snares I see on this. Now, I assume that he used his Lars Ulrich 1465 model a, a time or two on this. I mean, I yeah. have no proof of it, but, you know, that thing has been used pretty much on every album. We see it everywhere. It, it became popular. And another thing, I'll go off topic for a little bit because people, and I do forget this, people ask me all the time about when you talk about his model snare, his diamond plate one. We know we have the, you know, just your silver diamond plate, and we know about the black variation, but people ask me all the time about the scorched earth Lars Ulrich edition bell brass. I don't really have any information on it. I know it was very expensive and it was very limited. And when it came out, I don't think he even used it much. I think there was a time or two where he used it, but he used mainly just different Tama Bell brass. So Hmm. to answer those questions that people ask me, I really don't have much information, and I don't know why that scorched earth Bell brass isn't as popular. Uh, His model Bell brass, yeah. Um, Yeah. Collector's item, for sure. Very expensive. (laughs) Very expensive. Um, Like, what are we talking here? Jeez, I think I've seen one for 12 grand. Oh. I mean, and hey, listen, it, wow. it, if it is that limited and he never really used it, I mean, that's just the supply and demand. That's the market. But uh, yeah. so I just wanted to address that. People ask me that all the time. I really don't have much information why things went the way they went with that scorched earth bell brass and why he didn't use it more because you never see it in the studio. You rarely ever saw it on tour. We always see the, the, the just the regular diamond plate one. And now we see the same model, but painted black, you know, the anniversary mm-hmm. edition. So just something neat I wanted to throw out there and a- answer any of those questions. So that's if anybody yeah. knows, put that in the comments. What exactly was the story with the Scorched Earth? Because I really can't find too much about it. I, I think there was a time, a show or two where he played with it, but it's definitely not as popular. Um, no, I mean, awesome. I mean, I understand Rarity. why it's not that popular in the public because not everybody could throw that kind of money. But why is it not that popular with him in the studio? That's a question. Yeah, let us know about that in the comments. But while we're here, these I've never seen this. These there are basically cones, uh-huh. kind of a little basically looks like a lampshade, tiny little lampshade, but it's almost like gaff tape over the microphone over top of the microphones maybe to I assume keep out prevent bleed. yeah symbol bleed or something that's what i would but imagine. i have never yeah. seen that before ever because yeah. if we go okay so it looks like they're on the uh, there's some other pictures that have without them and then there's some like, with them i've never seen that i've never seen a cone no over top <laughs> of a uh condenser neither get it yeah yeah. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like one of those floodlights that when you get at the hardware. I was store. like, is this a light? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, exactly. Yeah. Don't know why. Don't know what that that does. But I would say, you know, just common sense. I would think to keep the bleed, the symbol bleed out of there or bleed from anything. Yeah. That's what I would think. Just something they're all trying. Kinds of cool, yeah, all right. kinds of cool studio um, yes. things here. And then multiple pictures. Apparently, Lars likes apples. Apples and There's fruit. There's a lot of pictures. Yeah. He changed his yeah, diet got <laughs> as he got older, as most of us do. I heard uh, <laughs> an interview with him on with Conan O'Brien, and he talked a lot about how he how he eats and it's tofu all the time. Vegetarian and stuff. I get like, it. I get it, yeah. We gotta, you're getting older, and you got to keep this yeah. up. 
And plus, you got you know they're still playing. It's not like they got rid of battery or anything. They're still playing these fast songs. You're still going for two no. hours. You got to be able to keep up with it. So a lot of water, yeah. a lot of apples. You know, symbols look different here. Uh, I love seeing the K played by by Lars. You know, I just love the K logo and and it's the sound of them. So that's kind of neat that he's yeah, using them. That's um, he didn't do that on tour. That's mainly a studio thing. So that would be you know your your K Dark Custom Crashes. Um, yep. that we see now. We saw a little bit on St. Anger. You're going to see it up till today on the 72 Seasons kit, uh, studio yep. kit anyway. I've never played them. They're they're very expensive and they're very thin. They're very expensive. So I've kind of like, <laughs> I know yeah, I'll, I'll break the them. K, I've played them at like a store and I you know I worked at Guitar Center and I played them uh, the, where I went to school. There was a drum set in the studio that had uh, K Sweet symbols, I think, or there was also K Hybrids. And I have a K uh, 16, is it a 14 or a 16? A pretty, I think it's a 14. It's a small crash that I absolutely love. Yeah. Hands down, like one of my favorite symbols I've ever had. Yeah. I think it, it's just a, you know, 14 inch crash, which again is small, but it's. Well, I'm but sure it's they, mighty. I'm sure they sound good, but just for me, they're yeah. expensive and I break stuff all the time. So I, oh, yeah. I don't want to break $400 symbol, but so he's no. got those on in the studio and you see what stands they are. I'm not mentioning them again. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say the name. You got to say the name once. Tom and Titan HC 104 TBs still used to this day. I've got there about go. 20 of them around me. Great stand. Nice. Great stand. I got another story for you. I'll, I'll tell you the story. Um, so Billy, actually Billy Harrington again, hooked me up with, uh, I think he hooked me up with three cymbal stands that I needed to complete the damaging incorporated kit. And wh when you get to the Titans, uh, I don't know if it was a bad run. Nobody can seem to answer this, but the collars, you know, up towards the top where they telescope, the collars spin. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got like 20 of these stands and, you know, I I've repaired about a dozen of them. And then the rest don't need any work. So I've been doing this for a while. So I've been looking for these stands for months. You know, I wanted to retrofit the the uh, the damage uh, incorporated kit that I had built. I had uh, road pros and I wanted to get it period correct. That's the last thing I had to do. So finally, I put a, I put a, on a story on my Instagram and Billy comes to me and says, I got three. I'm like, great, I'll take them. So he sends them great condition. Thank you very much, Billy. I get these stands here. And I got one of the collars that have spinning. No big deal. I've done this all the time. I tape them up. I take them out to my sandblaster, clean them up, and I use like a, a two-part epoxy, and I put them back together. Well, yeah. there's a clamp that slides over that pipe. I, I wish I took one apart and had it here for you. But uh, yeah. So there's yeah. a clamp that slides across that pipe, and it needs to be on that pipe before you glue the collar on there because otherwise there's no way to get it back on. So – it never happened to me before. I glued this thing together. I let it cure for 24 hours. I didn't have the collar on there. I tried taking the weight off the counterweight and slide it up that way. Not happening. So I thought, hey, it's a clamp. It moves back and forth. Let me spread it a little so I could get it up the back end. Shattered it. <laughs> <laughs> ruin the stand and it's not like oh, you boy. can go out and buy these stands anymore they're just they're they're vintage relics and you get one in such wow. good condition man it ruined my whole night part oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh man oh, there's nothing i, I, I know that feeling of, so lucky i'll just yeah. fix this and nope yeah and destroy it you know and it's not like it's a road pro where you can run down the street but luckily i have spare parts and i have spare pieces and i was able to do it but still you know that that sucks. That's yeah. <laughs> so, that sucks. Man. So I don't well, know. <laughs> is what it is. Live, laugh, Lars, man. But you got to just move on. Exactly. Live, laugh, <laughs> Lars. That's the story on those stands. I got off tangent again, but uh, that, yes. that's those HC yep. 104 TB great stands. So uh, looks like we have the Z um, hi hat combo. We're off of the Peisty, or I'm sorry, the we're off Sabian. of the Sabian yep. so for this one. For this album, yep. yep, we're back to the Z custom Dino Beats, what she uses on tour. The front kick drum heads, um, different this time, just right, your clear ones, kind of like he had back on the Injustice recording. Just yep. your your Remo clear front bass drum heads with the, uh, looks like a 10, 12 porthole. So again, Center. You're, yeah, you're in the studio. You don't need any logos. You don't need any, you know any color black color or uh, the, the white kind of emperor coded you don't need that so yep so death magnetic was recorded march through may 2007 and it was released um i think it was released september 2008 and like i said earlier they had that uh, on on xm it was it was xm at the time they were separate from series they had that mandatory metallica thing where they debuted it that way that's the next album after saint anger how we talked about the pirating thing and all that this was different this was released um 
you know, they had it playing on XM prior to the release. Oh, and that's interesting. Yeah, so it was different. It, it was more, you know, internet based. I remember when this one came out. I remember listening to it in my truck at the time and uh, the mandatory Metallic thing. And they had yeah. they had built up. I think it was like three weeks of their old stuff, and then right before they released it publicly, I think you got it like a week or two early. And they mixed it in. So then you had another three weeks, three or four weeks of their new stuff and their old stuff before they cut the channel. Oh, cool. So that was cool back. That's how yeah, they released it back I love, then. So. I have I have Sirius XM. I remember trying it in a rental car. And then I was like, my God, I love this. And then it's like four bucks a month. Yeah. And then you just call and threat. You just call and say you're going to cancel. <laughs> right, and you, right. You get the deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, but now with like Pandora and Spotify, I've gotten away with it. Can the Android I Auto know. and the Apple CarPlay, I've kind of like. Yes, the CarPlay. You know, I, when I buy a car, it's like it comes with it for six months. And then like they just flood your mailbox with, hey, you're renewed now. Renew I, now. I'm like, hey, every hey. day. Here's your daily playlist. And I'm yeah, like, I don't all right, this. I get it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So we had it out with Pandora and all that. That's. That's what I listened to. But anyway, that's how they released it. And that's pretty much Death Magnetic. And they and like we discussed in the first two episodes, they went on their World Magnetic Tour and he had the orange kit and all that. We won't go too deep if you want to see that. Watch uh, I believe that's episode two of their just regular tour yeah. here. But that's pretty much Death Magnetic in a nutshell. And and the stuff is now it's going to start going quicker and faster because they're not trying as much new things, you know, as they did in St. So we're Anger. up to Hardwired. So now we're up to Hardwired. And really the only thing has changed is we got rid of the Gretsch kick drums and he brought in the orange magnetic, uh, uh, I think it was called um, magnetic orange was the tour kit. He brought in those kick drums opposed to the Gretsch. Yeah. And if you look at it in one picture, it looks like the Gretsch drums and it's got that color. But then if you look at another picture, you can definitely see it's the magnetic orange kick drums. Yeah. Same time. I like that orange. Yeah, I think it's cool. That is cool. That's a very cool orange. And um, back to the, LU 1465 Ulrich model snare drum, the regular diamond plate. I don't see anything different used, but what I will mention about this kit is I don't see the Sabians for the hi-hats. I see Zildjian Dino again. Okay, I see a lot of K crashes mixed in with some A's, uh, pretty yeah. much mimicking his tour kit. Again, two crashes on the right, two on the left, the, the very low China to his right that he uses as a ride and the, and the high one behind the floor toms. So everything's kind of mimicking the tour kits. And, you know, you have your white emperor heads on the batter heads. And yep. uh, as Lars does, when he gets frustrated, he likes to jam the drumsticks <laughs> down through the snare <laughs> head. <laughs> yes. As we a luxury about, yeah. we do not have. Right. As, uh, We're not going to do it. Yeah. But, yep. That's what he, that's what he um, likes to do. So Amazing pictures of the headquarters yeah. here. I mean, holy cow. Yeah. Imagine walking into that place mm -hmm. and... Uh, just I just I, I, I like to spend a weekend, even a couple a day or so there. Just all the fan stuff that they have on the wall. I mean, they have some of the backdrops. Uh, I've seen the Ride the Lightning backdrop and the Master of Puppets one that they just recently got. That was another story that they got that returned to them. Like I was saying, they get a lot of stuff stolen, and somebody wow. returned that to them, and they've got that again. And then they've got Doris, the Injustice for All statue. They got her head up there. I just, I'm sure the yep. rest of the statue is too big, but just a really yeah. cool place. And that's where they record everything now. They don't, you know, they don't really leave that place. I mean, maybe it gets mixed other places. I'm not sure. I remember somebody had mentioned on our last episode that Injustice for All was not recorded at one on one. It was recorded in Rochester. Now they weren't completely wrong. That just brings me into this point. It was recorded at one on one, but I do remember it was mixed up in Rochester. So okay. I, yeah, I wanted yeah, to mention because he wasn't that. he wasn't completely wrong. It was mixed. It was recorded at one on one, but it was mixed up there. So they did have a tendency back then to get it mixed different places. But I don't think they do that anymore. I think everything's in house. You know, now we know they own their Got own. It. They own their songs. They own their record label. They probably just do everything in house now. You know, everything now is not Electra. It's blackened, you know, recordings or whatever yeah. it says. Yeah, that's what I would do so, if I could. I mean, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I don't I don't think they ship it out to get mixed anymore. I think it's all done in house. So, yeah. And it's a lot less going on than St. Anger. It's one kit now. <laughs> There's no which is it, whatever. I yeah. mean, yeah, you find what you like and you and yeah, you stick with of, it. So, yeah. And I will mention yeah. uh, Remo kick pads on the bass drum heads. And okay. still, even record. That's another thing we never mentioned. We, we mentioned in the first two episodes that his bass drum beaters have always been the traditional felts. Same felt, way on the recording. Yes. It's tra to, no, excuse me. The traditional felt beaters. He uses that in the studio also. 
So yeah. that's just a little thing I'll, I'll put out there and um, towels everywhere. Yep. Towels, monitor mix, Q system yeah. kind of thing over there. And uh, a lot of mics. I mean, it's good stuff. Everything is good. Yeah. As good as you can get kind of right. high quality because uh, you're in Metallica. Tent- exactly. Metallica, so so it looks to me they found their niche and that's you now that's just how they do it. So and that's, like I said, pretty much up till today. Which is 72 seasons. 72 which, seasons. Uh, so the album is awesome. I mean, I think it's really cool. You know, I it's growing on me. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, you're you're a purist. Well, like you know. so when they released it, it, and it happens with everything. Even like when you see new cars released, you'll look at it like the new trucks or cars. You're like, oh, that looks like crap. And then you look at it for a couple of years, and it's not that bad. So no, exactly. What happened was, I remember they did this thing right before they released it uh, that that spring, 2023. They had a movie. Yep. They they released it in the movie theaters. So I said, hey, yeah. you know, let me go, let me go check it out. I had never done anything like that before. I went to the movie theaters. I sat there and watched it. Now, first off, I thought they were going to give you the music videos to it. They didn't give you anything. They just gave you like some flashing stuff from the screen. And it was just like, uh, like I guess like an alternate. With the music. With the music. It was like an alternate video. I thought it was going to be more, I thought it was going to be cooler than it was. Whatever. You're, okay. you're still here on the okay. new album. So when I heard it, I really didn't like it. I mean, I liked You Must Burn a lot. And I liked yeah. uh, Crown of Barbed Wire. But other than that, I was like, oh, this album's terrible. But it has grown on me now. So it's <laughs> yeah. starting to get a little better. It's not my favorite. Yeah. But uh, that's the Yellow Kid that everybody that's knows today kid. that they're currently on tour with, the Star Classic yeah. the Star Classic Maple. We won't go too far into the tour kit because we've done that. But so when you talk about the recording of 72 Seasons, number one, it's so new. And, and number two, I don't think they released much on it. You know, usually they do like a, well, for St. Anger, they did a whole motion picture and then, you know, they did Death Magnetic and they did Hardwired. There's, there's like, you know, what would you call like fanfare or some kind of just home video they released. But for 72 seasons, they didn't do anything like that. So there's really not much for me to talk about with it. The only thing I found was kind of these two pictures with Hetfield uh, standing there. And like I said, you know, he's, uh, I was able to kind of time stamp it or place it there because the way Hetfield looks, I know it sounds weird, but you know, you just, you know, you watch them all the yeah, time. You, you can tell how they look and he's got his cigar. I don't know if that's new, but it's starting to come into public more recently. You know, he was on the magazine of cigar. Uh, I think it's a cigar. I, I don't know what it's called, but he was on the cigar yeah. magazine. So the way he looks, I was able to place it uh, on that time and behind him, is the exact same uh, setup for hardwired to self destruct. Ex- exact same kit. Really no changes at all. You know, the um, the magnetic orange kick drums with your your green sparkle uh, rack toms and floor toms. Same setup. So I don't really have any new information for you for seventy two seasons or any solid information. I believe that's what the album was recorded on. You know, okay. it has been for a while. We know the green star classic toms haven't really left the recording for a while you know they were on death magnetic they were on hardwired to self-destruct so why wouldn't they be there things are starting to streamline they're starting to do things you know they're starting to they're they're not trying as much as what i'm trying to say so i believe that's what 72 seasons was recorded on um okay makes sense so you know yeah that that's what i believe so i didn't want to just say ah that's what i think and and have a good day so kind of like i did in the other episode i wanted to discuss something else maybe give you like an Easter egg or we'll talk about something different. Um, I wanted to talk about a, at least a rumor, a rumor that I think is for real. Um, I believe they're going to release a retail 72 seasons yellow kit. Now it was leaked to me. I'm not going to say who did it or, or where it came from, but I guess when you do stuff like this and you do the podcasts and you know, you're in the public as having all these replica kits, people send you stuff. So I was yeah. fortunate enough to get sent a picture that I believe to be very accurate. It's, it looks like a Tama ad and it's the, the retail version of what he's using on stage. You know, we could see in the, ad, it's kind of hard to read, but it looks like, you know, we got the two, 22 by 18s, and I think it's a 10 by 7, a 12 by 9, your 16 by 14, and 16 by 16 uh, shells. Um, now, this particular kit from the ad does not come with a snare. I, I don't know. I know the uh, Arkstar 2s came with a snare. I know that for a fact. So the, the, the second retail kit they did was the Deeper Purple. 
Now, I don't know if that one came with a snare, but I can tell you for a fact, according to this ad, it's not coming with a snare. You're getting two kick drums, you're getting two rack toms, and you're getting two floor toms. And they're going to have the heads on them, and that's all you're getting. You're not you're not going to get the, the tom stand, it appears. You're not getting cymbal stands. And naturally, you don't get that anyway with kits. No, but, but this is not a cheap drum this set. This is not a cheap drum set. Now, that's another thing. Let's let's go down that road. Sometimes this can be controversial, but the list price on it appears to me to be twelve thousand three hundred. But the MSRP is eight thousand dollars. <laughs> Listen, if you yeah, if you got Baza. it and you want it, more power to you. Pick it up. You won't be fighting me for it. <laughs> I will not be in that. <laughs> I will not yeah, be that's going. That's a lot of this. money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I would kind of. You know, I'm the older kind of guy. I do the older thrash kits. If I found the retail kit, the one that was released in 92, the R-Star 2s, I might fork up the eight grand. But still, even then, I would be kind of like, whoa, that's a lot for a set of drums. <laughs> <laughs> so, b- yeah, but what a lot you, you can do with eight grand. Yes, yeah. a lot you can do with eight grand. Uh, another story, I remember back in 2008, right around Death Magnetic, uh, Vinnie Paul from Pantera, another, you know, guy I like a lot, had released a kit uh, with D drums and it was yeah. the same kind of layout mine, uh, same kind of layout, excuse me, minus one floor tom and it was eight grand back then. I was like whoa, whoa <laughs> not for me but Crazy. Uh, so this is, yeah. this is and I believe this to be very accurate. You think somebody would make a, you'll see the picture if you're watching at home and if you're listening when you get home you could take a look at this picture um, it appears to me to be very accurate why would somebody go through this length to make something fake? I I, I don't buy that. Maybe yeah. maybe other things, politics and conspiracy theories, but I, but not Tom of Drums. You know, no, it'd be and it's not it's a bizarre thing right. to fake. It's yeah. it's a bizarre thing to fake. They have done this before. They've done it with uh, the Art Star Twos. They've done it with the Hardwired Deeper Purple Drums. So and like we discussed in the Tour Kit episode. I was waiting for this. I thought they would do something. At least I was hoping they would do something like this. So I wanted to mention this. I think this is something that's coming in September. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit about something. Um, By the time you watch this, you might be in the middle of August, first week of August. So you'll probably first week of August. Probably, you'll yeah. probably be getting ready to see a lot of new things released in September, October, maybe six weeks from now. Um, there's some projects going on with Metallica. Something that I was involved in, and that's all I'm going to say. You will see a project. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But something that I was involved in, I w- I'm not going to speak anymore. Um, I was asked not to, and I'm a man of my word, so I won't. But there is a lot of cool things coming from Metallica and Tama. And then this kind of the time frame kind of fits in there. So I think this is factual. I think we're getting this release. I really do. Yes. And hopefully we can talk about what you were talking about before later in in more detail to some degree. I was, yeah, yeah, I was asked yeah, to, you know, just respect the project. And when the project comes out, then I can speak openly. You know, sometimes Which projects we'll do don't come out. Maybe they don't come out. Maybe they do. When the time comes, I'll speak on it. But I'm a man of my words. Yes. That's all I'm going to yes. say. I'm not going to get into details. But this here kind of coincides in my mind with that time frame. So I just basically just to sum it all up, you got a lot of cool things coming this fall and winter from Tama and Metallica. A lot of cool things yes. are coming, I believe. So, yes. and I w- we can't help ourselves but <laughs> end on cliffhangers, yes. no matter what. <laughs> it's a lot. I think there's a lot of cool things coming now. Now, this I want to discuss. I mean, the price for me is kind of a it's kind of a bummer. But hey, listen, if you got it and that's what you want, go for it. It's still cool that they released it. So that absolutely that that in itself is cool. So I believe it to be factual. You know, if it never comes, don't beat me up because this was just something that was sent to me. And just a spoiler, kind of, you, you know, know we're, could be we are so deep. Teaser. Yeah, we are so deep into Lars and his tour kits and his studio kits. We got to talk about it. We ha- we have yeah. to talk about it. So no, so I it's... released a little clip on my Instagram, and then I wanted to hold the rest for this uh, show. And uh, so there it is. I mean, it, there it is. Say in the com- tell me in the comments what you think. Do you think this is real? Do you think this is fake? What do you think? Uh, I know people are going to comment on the price. I mean, that's just how we are, and that's what people comment yep. on. But listen, hey, it, yep. supply and demand. If you got it and you want it, go for it. And I hear there's only going to be 
72 released worldwide. Oh, wow. That makes sense. Makes sense. So that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, but there's people out there who have a lot of money and uh, write good for them good and for they want to buy cool things. And go for it. Uh, if you want to buy an eight thousand dollar Lars replica right. drum set, then good for you. Awesome. I hope you're, you get you're it, it, and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, that's just that's just the way it is. Regardless of price, it's still cool to me that they are yes. releasing a kit. So <laughs> yes, well, um, Chris, my friend. I mean, this kind of brings us home to for now. For now, wrapping up the tour kits and the studio kits of mm-hmm. Lars. Right. And uh, I know I speak for everyone when I say thank you for all the time and effort. I mean, this has been a year in the making. Yeah, uh, I, We've had cancellations on, on my part of kids. Yeah. We've created merchandise together. <laughs> we've done all sorts of things now. Well, listen, it's uh, it's it's been cool. It's, it's, it's kind of sad when things come to an end, but I'm just glad that we got all this out into the public. And I didn't even know, oh, yeah. I didn't even know we were going to go this far. We, I thought we were just doing tour kits, but we brought you tour kits and studio kits and merchandise. And, and you can always still follow up with me on my channel. I'm still going to be doing oh, yeah. stuff, but just the fact, and first of all, thank you for Billy Harrington for connecting the two yes. of us. And just thank you to you for just, you know, giving me a platform to talk on and, and working with me and doing all this stuff. And, you know, I, I really my appreciate pleasure. it. Um, my pleasure. Like I said last summer, nothing like this ever existed. And a lot of guys, including myself, always wanted a deep dive, you know, gear episode into Lars. And and not only is that out there, the studio's out there, the studio kits are out there now too. So um, yeah. it's just it's yeah. it's been great. It's it's a great thing that happened. Thank you for uh, helping me uh, get it to the public. I had oh a good God, time with pleasure. it. I had a really good time. I had a great time. And Definitely. and again, you're a very cool dude. And I'm I have, oh. I'm sure we'll still text and talk. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'll link to everything for Chris with Chris RZ 28 on, uh, social media and all right. that stuff. I got, and, the, I um, got the Instagram and now I know you did say last episode, you want me to get a YouTube? Well, I did. <laughs> I did get the YouTube, oh, good. but go. the only video I put on there was the one that's on Instagram. I did kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm a nine. You got a cross. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a nineties kid. So I used to play like this video game, Sonic the Hedgehog too. I saw that. I, that was awesome. I did a cover. I've always wanted to do it. That's the only video that's on YouTube for now, but I made it. Yeah. So when I get more stuff, I'll put it on there so that's there it's the same thing chris rz 28 and uh, that's where you cool. can find like again ask questions uh comments whatever i'm, I'm around so <laughs> perfect well I'm, I'm happy you did that and i'm glad i could push you a little bit because you will not regret it yeah. it'll be very worth it um so it's fun so uh, all right well all thank right. you everyone for watching get your live laugh lars <laughs> bumper sticker check the link in the description and uh it, again it just helps support chris and i doing this and uh on that note, we will see you later, folks. <laughs> All uh, right, thank everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. No see problem. You, Have a good one. <laughs>